Welcome in to a brand new episode of the Foul Pole to Foul Pole Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Tyler from Black Diamond Softball and Fitness. As always, we are presented by the Carolina Patriot Collegiate League. Check us out at cpatriotcl.com to register. And fans, you can stay up to date with all the information. This episode is brought to you by the Nexus Mount. Our turnkey kits provide a secure and hassle-free way to attach multiple devices to any fence, net, or tripod. Crafted from lightweight aluminum with a powder-coated finish, our mounts are built to last. That's not all. Our innovative design features a removable shade cover to protect your devices from direct sunlight during outdoor streaming events, minimizing the risk of overheating. Don't settle for anything less than perfection. Unleash the full potential of your streaming experience with the Nexus Mount. Visit us today at thenexusmount.com and elevate your game. All right, let's jump right on into it today. Today is Monday, April 22nd. Hope you guys had a great weekend. I had an absolutely incredible weekend. It was a rain out on Sunday, but I mean, it was a, it's a good weekend for me overall. Um, a lot of good things in the works for me personally on, on the personal side, so I'm excited for that. Um, as we move forward towards uh, the end of the high school season in a lot of areas, pushing towards that postseason play, that means travel ball is right around the corner. Big time summer months, uh, whether it's travel baseball, travel softball, um, it's a big time of year for our sophomores, our juniors, our seniors. You know, got their seniors sort of uh, getting tuned up, getting ready for that fall. This last summer season for a, a lot of girls is is sort of a make or break at this point. Uh, the ones that sort of figured out what they were going to do and said, hey, you know what, I do want to play college ball. So they are up against it like nobody's business. Uh, trying to get in at the last minute. And then we have these, you know, we have the the juniors that are there. Uh, a June first date coming up for D two schools. So, um, kudos to the uh, the girls that are working their process, continuing the the communication, uh, going to camps when they can. Uh, I know, believe it or not, there are still camps that go on during the uh, the season, prospect camp stuff like that. Um, you know, kudos to the ones that are shooting out those emails, trying to stay in contact doing a little bit of research on their schools. You know, I've talked about that a little bit in the past about, you know, staying in tune with what that school is doing, paying attention to their records, looking at how they play certain plays, look at their bunk coverages. Um, if you can get to a game, maybe uh, listen how the coach communicates, listen how the teams communicate, who's their leaders, you know, kind of how these girls respond to adversity. How are they when they celebrate? What's the fan culture like? Can you see yourself being on the field during a game? Uh, That kind of stuff. So, you know, this time of the year, um, it seems like, hey, um, they can't talk to me anyway. I can't go to camps. There's really not a whole lot that I can do, which is actually quite the opposite of that. So uh, continue to, you know, push the envelope on on what you're doing and what you're capable of. You know, a lot of you guys out there like, I don't know what to say in an email. Why even send them an email? Why even tag them on social media, this and that? Well, you know, they may not respond. They, they get a lot of emails. They get a lot of correspondence. They're busy. They're coaching the team. But, you know, if they go back and, and they filter and go, OK, is this the first email from this girl? Have I talked to her before? They'll say, like, wow, she sent every week. She's sending me an email letting me know how well she did. She's sending me clips. She's staying in tune with what we're doing. She's keeping up with our weekend series. If we have a, a weekday series, she's keeping up with that. Um, she's sort of invested in the process. And a lot of times, just showing an investment in the recruiting process will spark a little bit of an interest from that coach just so they can do their due diligence. So they'll check you out and go, hey, you know, she is a 2025 and she's sending us these emails or she's a 2026 and she's sending us these emails. Uh, She plays up the middle for her high school team and her travel team. But, man, I could really see this girl playing left for us or something like that looking at her high school videos, looking at her travel team videos, stuff, looking at your workout videos. It's like, wait a minute, let's get her out to one of our prospect camps so we can get eyes on her. Or if she has sent me her schedule for this summer, I can take a look at that and go, hey, I, I'm going to be at that tournament. Anyway, I'm going to circle that um, and, and you know, get out there and watch her play. So there's, there's always these things that you can do that sort of behind the scenes that no one else really knows about. And that's really where the work gets done. You know, posting this stuff out on social media, um, just tagging them randomly on Twitter isn't the way to go unless you've had some type of relationship with them um, to where they say, yeah, tag us, you know, keep us informed, whatever. And then when they do that, then boom, that's it. 
uh, you tag them, tag away. Like if you're in a workout or if you're in a game, you make a, you know, a highlight type catch or, you know, a, a two out, two RBI triple, something like that, you know, send that to them, but make sure they want you to tag them. Um, sometimes they will. And then oftentimes we'll see players that just tag random coaches that, A, they don't even know where the school is. Uh, B, they don't know if that's the head coach. Uh, C, um, you know, are they done recruiting your class and, and that kind of stuff? So it's just, uh, it's just silly. So the, the best way to do it is to have some sort of relationship with that coach and, and ask them. You know, if you go to one of their camps and you take that picture with them and and you say, hey, is it, coach, is it okay if I, I tag you with this? And and they're going to say yes because they want you to tag them in the school because it's, you know, free advertising for them. It's publicity for them showing that, hey, we are running camps and stuff, so it might interest someone else to come to a camp. And then you ask them, like, do you mind if I tag you in my uh, highlights or tag you in my workout clips, whatever? And I don't know too many coaches that will tell you no straight up. So all you get is that thumbs up, and then you're good to go. Now, where you can kind of run into something with that, tagging them on social media, it's not necessarily who you tag. It's who you don't tag. And, man, there are thousands of coaches out there, whether it be head coaches, assistant coaches, uh, hitting coaches, pitching coaches, that kind of thing. There's, there's a lot of people out there in the softball world. So if you're only tagging four or five of them, you're missing like 99.5% of the other coaches that you could have tagged as well. So it shows them that you're not interested in that school, even though maybe you've been emailing them and they're following you on Twitter and you know you do something, you, you put out a highlight and you're tagging these couple of coaches like, okay, well, we're just not in her realm. We're not in her interests or whatever. And then they'll just take you off the list because you're not showing interest in them. There's no need for them to show interest in you because there's so many athletes out there trying to get recruited. So it's a very fine line. Uh, a lot of opinions on that, but that's my opinion on that. Talking to the coaches that I've talked to, talking to the scouts and and, and people that I've talked to as far as tagging on Twitter. I know you see it, man. Believe me. I know you see all your friends and all these people just randomly tagging uh, schools, their favorite schools, and I get that. But one example I want to sort of present to you is you'll have a player that tags nothing but Division One schools. That's all she tags in. That's all she emails. And at some point, she's going to come to the realization that She's not a power five D one athlete. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The thing is she didn't find that out until it was too late for her to find another school that would have been a good fit for her. So now she's scrambling, trying to find somewhere else to go. And you know, it, it sort of trickles down from the Power 5 D1 because we, you know, sort of figure out where the unicorns go and then where these needs are being filled in from, like a transfer portal and, you know, where's this, you know, phenom freshman pitcher, you know, where's she going to land at? And then, we okay, we figure out, okay, well, she's at, she's going to Florida or she's going to Stanford or she's going to Texas, whatever. And then now all these other schools are scrambling to get number two, the number three, the number four, and that kind of stuff. So it, it sort of trickles down. And then you're looking, okay, where else is everybody, where else is everyone going to go? And that's sort of what happens. Um, You get your, you fish in such a small pond. And then once all those fish are gone out of that pond, you still fish in that pond a little bit. Then you realize all those fish are gone. So now you've got to pack up all your stuff, your rods, your reels, your tackle. You got to pack up everything. And then now you got to go find another pond. Well, that other pond could be, you know, a couple of mile walk. Because think about it, you're going to be down in the dumps that you didn't get that call. You didn't get that offer. You didn't get that look. Now you start questioning yourself. You start questioning, like, where am I at? Do I even want to play ball anymore? This and that. You start, you know, questioning the process. Um, You start questioning yourself. Do I even want to play? Do I even want to go to college now? You know, not even just the, the athletic side of it. It's the academic side, too. So, Everything kind of comes into question. And it's a lot of pressure. We're talking about 16, 17-year-old kids going through this. So cast a wide net. Um, Those no's that you get or those sort of, I haven't heard back from this coach. I've emailed them 
20 times in the last three months type stuff and you don't hear anything, continue fishing. It doesn't hurt. Continue pushing, you know, through that process because you're never going to know. And what's crazy is that, and I get told this a lot, they don't have a set time. You know, we're kind of at the mercy of the coaches when they have their time to sit down and look at emails, when they decide they're going to respond, you know, they have personal lives too. They have families, they have wives, they have husbands, they have kids. They got schedules. They got the same stuff that you deal with on a daily basis. They do that as well. We just pay attention to what they do on the softball field or in that recruiting realm. And and that's sort of what we think they are. Like they're just softball robots and (laughs) that's not the case. Um, And on top of that, we have to look at the, the coaches that retire, have to look at the coaches that resign. We have to look at the coaches that get fired. We have to look at the coaches that move on from coaching because that opens up a whole brand new tree, if you will. Is an assistant coach just stepping in, becoming the interim, and then they're going to take over the job? Are they looking to hire outside? Um, you could have gotten told no from NC State, but now that coach has moved over to Tennessee, and now they're saying no. And it just, so it's just – it's not a perfect process. It's not like if I check all these boxes, I'm going to get to go to my dream school. It's continuing that process and trying to find your fit. Now, it's not just going to be one fit for you. There's going to be multiple fits that you can sort of mold yourself into. You know, maybe you're from a big city and you don't want to go to some small town, but it has everything else that you want to to have. It's all, everything is there. It's all offered for you. So you might compromise and go, well, I did want a big city, but I'll settle and go to a small town because of X, Y, and Z. And then boom, there you go. Or I was kind of figuring out the two majors that I couldn't make a decision on it. I really like this school. So I like the location. I like the cost. I like the team. I like everything. So I'm going to go and do this major. And that's how it sort of decided the major for you because you were really splitting hairs trying to figure out which one you liked more. So there's multiple fits in this process. Don't get caught up in this is my dream school and this is the only school that I'm looking at and the pieces are going to fall exactly how I want them to and that kind of stuff. Just stay stay the course and it will come to you exactly what you want to do. Now, again, the transfer portal transfer portal is there. And It has been used and abused, and I think personally, looking at it, never gone through it, don't know any athlete that's that's gone through it on a personal level. I do know a couple of athletes that I have talked to, and they've been on the podcast and stuff, um, that have used the transfer portal, and it's worked out great for for, for them. Um, I don't know of anyone that's used that portal uh, that has done it over playing time or done it because of some nefarious reason. There's always been a reason they've done their due diligence and it's worked out for them. Um, So um, personally, I can't speak on it. I don't know enough about it. I don't really care to know too much about the portal. I know it's there. And if as long as it's used the correct way and it's sort of governed by someone that can control it, um, which is not a whole lot of control in that portal, but uh, the, that is out there. And I, I like the portal because we can see athletes go from, say, the D3 to the D2 or cross deck and D2 to D2. I like it. You know, D2 athletes are getting bumped up to D1 or, you know, D3 going to D1, something like that. I really like that, um, you know, especially going from a two-year school into a four-year school. I love that. Um, I'm not big on why well, I didn't get playing time and I'm out of here. I don't don't really like the coach because they yelled at me or something like that. I'm not a big fan of the portal that way, but you know, that goes again, stay in the course. It's going to get tough at times. It's going to be times that they're hard. There's going to be times that you absolutely love it. So it's just like life, but sort of circling back to this time of year, what we should be doing in April and May getting up ready to go for the, the summer months, that sort of that six week recruiting window when the coaches are out you're in these these tournaments, not necessarily a showcase tournament, but you're out there where, you know, they're on the recruiting trail too. you know, make sure they know you're there. So continue to send those emails. Let them know how your senior season went. Um, don't make it too long in your emails or whatever. Um, just they don't care about your stats. Honestly, um, you can tell them you batted uh, 611 with four triples, two home runs. 
40, 40 RBIs, 18 stolen bases. You, you can say all that stuff, but they have no idea um, how to look at that objectively, right? They don't know the, the, the level of your team. They don't know the level of competition you played. Um, that would be awesome if you played nothing but against, you know, D1, D2 caliber athletes, and those are your numbers. But they know that that's not the case. <laughs> so it, stats are cool for you. Man, I had an incredible you know, junior season. I had 14 home runs, which is awesome. Um, and I, I batted 500, which is awesome. And I stole 42 bases, which is awesome. Um, but no one else does. You and your family and your, and your you know, close-knit pocket of friends and, and teammates, stuff like that. that's awesome. And you should cherish that. And when the awards and stuff you get, keep that. Because at some point, when you get to my age, you're going to look back and go, man, what an incredible season. Those stats aren't going to really get you recruited uh, to go to go to college. Uh, just like your game changer stats and uh, your, your travel team and stuff like that. It's all subjective. You know, it can be changed. It can be um, mama or daddy, whoever's running it. And every ball that's put in play is either a, a hit or an out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so just sort of keep that in mind too, but stats don't really, don't really matter what they're looking for. Honestly, um, they want to see you go out there and handle some adversity. They get to a point where they've seen enough of your stats. They are seen enough of your video clips, not, not your stats, your clips. Um, they see the, the, the team that you're on. They, they either know that name or have a relationship with someone in the organization, or they may have a relationship with your coach. So they know that caliber of coach and, you know, maybe they've talked to some people and they've heard and seen this and that. So when they come watch you, maybe they do want to see you struggle. Maybe they want to see you strike out once and see how you respond. Maybe um, you bobble one, you don't get the out, and there's an error there. They want to see how do you respond. Are you still that same vocal leader on the field? Are you still turning around communicating with the outfield? Are you bumping into the circle, high-fiving the, the, the pitcher after a strikeout? Um, like that kind of stuff. So that's really a lot of the reason that coaches want to come watch you play. Now they're not going to say that straight up. Hey, go out there and strike out. I want to see how you fail. I'm not. I'm not saying that that's what they're they're going to do. But these scouts and these college coaches that come and watch you play ball, they're looking at the whole package. They know once you get to this 16U high uh, high school level, um, they know that you can play ball uh, to a certain degree. They're going to want you to be able to play Tar Heel ball, Cardinal ball, Tigers ball, they, you know, Sooners ball. They, they want to see you play their brand of ball once they get you on campus and you're signing and you're a part of the team. They can get you to that level, but you have to be at a certain level before that. So, you know, can you hear a play call? All right, this is our bunk coverage on this play and execute it. Um, if it's. Uh, a take a pitch or if it's, you know, whatever, they understand that a, that a coach has called a play. He's called out numbers and given you a sign or whatever. Can you execute that? Um, and they have a pretty good understanding of the situation, so what the play call may be. Um, but they want to see if you don't succeed, how you handle that, that failure, that adversity. They want to see how you are in the dugout. They want to see um, how you communicate with other people. They damn sure – don't want to be able to identify who your parents are uh, in the dugout or in the stands by something negative, something that's said. Now, a lot of times you're not even going to know that they're there when they first get there. They're not going to be decked out in, you know, all this UCLA gear rolling up in there. And everybody's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, they're here. They're just sitting there hanging out just like uh, anybody else. You won't notice that they're there in the beginning. And if they, you know, go over and let the coach know that they're there. Or if your coach approaches or something like that, then you'll probably see him and something like that. And you'll get all nervous and, and they get that. But man, every time you take the field, understand that someone can be evaluating you to see if you're a fit for their program. That's it. And you should be evaluating yourself too. Uh, how good of a teammate are you? How good of a leader are you? So, Sort of take a look at what you've been doing. If it's good, continue doing that. If there's something that you can adjust or, or make a change or start doing, go ahead and do that now. Think about it. You're in, but you're soon. You're going to be in between seasons. You got one that's wrapping up. Playoff pitchers start to shape up for you guys. I hope everybody made the playoffs and you know that kind of stuff. And and then you're going to have a little bit of a downtime. Take that downtime seriously. Take some downtime. Your, your, your travel ball coach is going to tell you, no, we got practice this week. Uh, school ball's over with. Let's start now. 
take some downtime, listen to your to your body. Because you don't want to start your travel ball season, get hot and heavy into it for a couple of weeks, and then boom, we got an injury now. Or we've been having this nagging injury for a couple of weeks, and I didn't allow myself to recover from it. And now I'm I'm back in the same boat. So I'm only able to run 70% because I still got this daggone quad injury. So take some downtime. But anyway, continue to communicate um, if you are. If you haven't been communicating with colleges and, and you know reaching out, at least doing some research, trying to find your fit, that kind of stuff, it's never too late to start the process. I mean, of course, once you graduate and all that kind of stuff, it, that you know the ship has sailed. But whether you think like, oh, man, I'm, I'm so late to this and that, your fit's coming. Trust me, there are schools out there that will continue to look all the way up until the very last day of signing to, to find the right fit for, for their team. So you keep looking. You may have to travel a little bit further. You may have to take on one of their majors. You may have to make some adjustment. But if softball is that you know thing for you, then that's what you'll do. All right. I'm going to jump out of here today. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please check out the sponsors, cpatriotcl.com, Summer League, coming to Fayetteville, North Carolina during June and July. You'll be able to check it out. you got incoming freshmen getting a taste of the college game right away, sort of getting tuned up for the you know fall ball. Uh, you'll have some sophomores and some juniors really trying to stay sharp. You've got some seniors that are maybe coming into the transfer portal, coming out of the transfer portal. Uh, you'll have some of the the other end of the seniors that are, hey, this is a, the last crack for me. I, I'm looking to play professional ball. So there will be some professional scouts out there. A lot of high-level coaching, a lot of good stuff going on. I'm going to have Wayne on here pretty soon, sort of talk about what's going on. Probably have him on early part of, of May, early part of next month. Really uh, start talking about the logistics of everything, looking at the, the shape of the teams, looking at scheduling and stuff like that, seeing how everything's going with him. Uh, also, check out thenexusmount.com. This is some some crazy, just I can't believe not hardly, there's not, an, I don't see enough of these, which the product, the Nexus Mount is incredible. Whether you're hooking up your, your GoPro, your uh, Mevo, your phone, whatever device you're using, there is a mount for you. Uh, with the pocket radars and that kind of stuff too, there are mounts that can that can do it all for you. So check them out, thenexusmount.com. And as always, if you share this with a friend, be sure you tell them you love them.